Last presentation, just a quick wrap up. So before I do that, I will introduce myself. My name is Hadi Quadio from EBU. Um, I'm the lead on uh, video research and development, uh, and I'm a co-organizer co of this, uh, let's say, dev room, mainly led by uh, Christoph, and we try to do it every year. Uh, so uh, I would just try to sum up all the, the interesting presentation that we had today. Uh, so bear with me. If you were here, you can also interject or help if the summary is not to your liking, right? So what did we have this year? So this year we had, we tried to cover several topics. We had, uh, we covered actually frameworks on, um, for multimedia applications. Uh, we had Upipe, JStreamer, JPack uh, presenting. Then we had uh, a nice presentation about Codex uh, on the uh, new codec coming from the Open Media Alliance. Yeah? Alliance for Open Media, but yeah. Oh, yeah, you can put it the way you want. <laughs> But I think it means the same anyway. <laughs> um, and then we had, um, uh, let's say, a short presentation about uh, stress testing applications and APIs uh, from um, uh, Max, uh, Max Moros. Moros, yes. And we had a quick review of standards, mainly open standards, but um, on the audio side and also on the subtitle, subtitling sides from uh, the colleagues from IRT. Um, then we had, as we covered as well, uh, quality control uh, in a uh, broad extent with the media info and uh, CATE struct, which is another uh, project that we'll look, look into in a few seconds. And we had a few use cases covered. So two use cases, one from, France, uh, from Trace, Trace TV, not France TV, uh, which was about transcoding, open source transcoding. And we had as well a, um, uh, a case from Kaltura, which was more on uh, live streaming based on Nginx and, and others. So now I will go through. So first of all, we had a, a quick uh, history, uh, let's say, uh, overview from Kaltura. So for those of you who do not know Kaltura, Kaltura is just a, let's say, end-to-end -end video on-demand platform, and they were they were just basically telling us that they were in the open source domain since 10 years and that they took advantage of, you know, the uptake of video, you know, since the introduction of YouTube uh, to actually establish their, their, their framework. And now they're trying to get into the live, uh, let's say, uh, uh, streaming domain because it's becoming more and more important for broadcasters and not only. Um, so their next actually step is... Uh, is to move from the educational, uh, let's say, or MOOCs type of uh, application that they were providing to more, uh, let's say, content uh, delivery uh, uh, type of, of services. Then we went to the uh, live, uh, let's say, demo from uh, Jess. So Jess actually showed us how we could uh, quickly, using you know, a different open source tool, establish a live streamer based on RTMP. Uh, it was a very... Uh, let's say, a speedy demo from her. Uh, she managed to do it uh, uh, quite properly. Uh, what she kind of mentioned here was there was a very interesting point about whether you would, you would like to use RTMP or WebRTC. And her advice was, first of all, to use maybe Nginx uh, as, a, as a platform because it was more adapted for RTMP. But you could use actually other... Uh, solutions if you were more uh, interested in uh, using WebRT WebRTC. Uh, they went for Nginx because they use Nginx in their uh, environment, so basically in Kaltura uh, Enterprise. So they tend to actually go for uh, Nginx by default. So if you have, a, uh, let's say, a different uh, opinion, you can actually use uh, another tool. But her recommendation for RTMP streaming would be to go for Nginx. Uh, then we had a quick, um, let's say, presentation on, uh, on uh, TTML, which is the time, time text markup language. So it is used for subtitling, and uh, it was presented by Andreas Tai from IRT. The point of this presentation was just to show over the whole production end-to-end -end media chain, where do we support actually different uh, uh, subtitling standards and formats. So from his point of view as an expert and as the chairman of the EBU group on uh, subtitling, uh, most of the open source tools are, uh, let's say, embracing subtitle, uh, the subtitling standards. Uh, 
especially the, the profile IMSC1. I think I, yeah, that's it. So IMSC1 uh, is the profile that is, uh, let's say, uh, taking you know, uh, um, uh, traction at, at the moment. And the, another profile of, the, uh, of uh, subtitling, which is the SEMTTT, is being dropped basically by, uh, by the industry. So we may see more and more uh, the IMSC1, um, uh, let's say, profile coming up in the next, in the next years. And um, if you would like to have more details on the presentation, on the, um, let's say, the tools that support uh, uh, the latest profiles for subtitling, you just go through the presentation. You have a list of all the tools there. I tried to capture them here, but uh, I don't think I have all of them there. Uh, last but, I mean, third presentation, Trace TV, very interesting use case, uh, build, taking different uh, building blocks to build a transcoder. Uh, the key point of the presentation was that, uh, first of all, the transcoder was built to serve actually the increasing need from the employees in the company to uh, actually transcode content. So not only content, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, producers, but also community managers that have to transcode content to, uh, you know, serve their, let's say, web platforms and so forth. And you can correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken. Uh, but what was interesting in this is that now they have reached actually a quite, a, a, a quite a good maturity level and they want to share this uh, application. So put it either on a GitHub and uh, improve, uh, improve as well the, uh, let's say, ability to duplicate this, uh, this, uh, this example, this interesting use case. So uh, from, from what was captured, this uh, uh, use case is based on FFmpeg, basically, and a set of uh, other open source tools, Node.js, jQuery, and so forth. So we look forward to, uh, to receive an email saying, now the project is, uh, you know, is on GitHub and uh, ready to go and to be deployed in other corporations. JStreamer. So JStreamer, as we said, is one of these pipeline-based uh, multimedia frameworks. And we had an, another one which was presented, so Upipe. Um, JStreamer is a bit older than Upipe, but Upipe is, has, a, has a bit more traction today. It's uh, actually uh, taking traction. And uh, sorry? Here's your check. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> I take it after. Uh, okay. So JStreamer um, um, is... Um, covering a large spectrum of uh, codecs. Uh, there was a bit of confusion uh, uh, on JStreamer, basically saying that JStreamer was either a codec or a, um, or a, a transcoder or, and so forth. JStreamer is more of a framework, and you can use it to deliver different use cases. And uh, uh, it's part of the, uh, let's say, the, um, the pro propaganda campaign to try and uh, remove this confusion. Um, in terms of support, it supports several codecs, up to uh, H.265 at least, WebRTC. And what they want to support as uh, next step is uh, SDI over IP. So JStreamer was, was mainly used for, let's say, low, uh, let's say, non-professional applications. I would say not professional broadcast applications. And uh, that's made maybe, my, from my opinion, the difference between Upipe and, and, uh, and JStreamer is that Upipe would be more driven and, and used by, uh, you know, uh, professional uh, broadcasters than JStreamer, even though there are a few use cases where you could find JStreamer in professional broadcast applications. But um, it is not uh, uh, that, that well, uh, let's say, introduced in, this, in the professional domain. Um, just trying to go quickly on JPack. Interesting use case, uh, JPAC mainly tried to present to us uh, how they encoded 360 video. So basically, it was to show the, the, their approach in uh, reducing the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, bandwidth or increasing the bandwidth efficiency. So they tried to tile the picture, so the 360 picture you have, and they tried to stream to your, to the, to your mobile phone or to the device you have the tile that you are currently viewing in higher quality. So basically, what, how as you move across the, the, the 360 uh, video, you see a refresh of the quality as you go from one view to another because the view you are, uh, you are actually seeing is streamed at a poor, lower quality and then increased to a better quality. Um, this, this uh, let's say, tiling 
uh, mechanism is supported by MP4 box. That was actually the main message of the presentation. And you can already trial it. Um, I hope it, was, it came across uh, properly during the, the presentation. But mainly, mainly that's it. Uh, they were also lobbying for having different, let's say, quality, uh, uh, quality strategies because you can actually use different tiling models to improve the, the efficiency of your, your um, uh, compression or uh, the bandwidth efi efficiency. And at the moment, there are no specific recommendations about a specific tiling model. Um, Facebook actually had a previously um, uh, uh, a splicing model that they abandoned. It was called this uh, pyramidal uh, uh, mode, but they do not use it uh, anymore. So we, try, we are kind of going to, toward a convergence. We have a few, a few tiling models which are now available, but we don't have, a, let's say, a, a, clear, uh, a, a clear view on which one is the most optimal, basically, for, uh, for a 360 video streaming. Um, so at the moment, MP MP4 box implements four uh, four uh, tiling models. U-pipe, uh, as I said, um, new uh, um, roughly new compared to JStreamer, um, uh, has some traction, mainly um, uh, driven uh, for the professional broadcast domain, uh, and uh, really a framework to watch. Um, I'm actually very. Uh, glad to see that it supports uh, 10 bits, so some very uh, uh, professional uh, uh, format like the V210 there. It's very difficult to find a framework that supports it. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the uh, EBU R128, so these are actually frameworks that could be easily integrated in a professional domain, and it's actually nice to see that there are projects uh, which are uh, delivering these protocols. Media Info, very nice presentation, lots of tools. Uh, I knew only the Media Info one, so the metadata extraction tool. Um, and actually, the media um, uh, conformance checker was also introduced, as well as the, uh, uh, let's say, baseband quality control tool, which is the QC tool. Um, I wasn't really sure if it was uh, you that developed the QC tool, so the baseband one. Wasn't really clear. That's, that's what I, I think of what I, what I captured, actually. So, but it was interesting to see that from a, a media extraction, metadata extraction tool, you extended the, let's say, the set of, uh, uh, of product that you could provide from conformance to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, deep bit definitions, uh, and uh, down to actually the baseband quality assessment with different uh, metrics, so PSNR, SSIM, and so forth. And one of the point, one of the questions that came up was to whether uh, Media Info was interested to broaden the set of uh, metrics that would be supported by the baseband tool, and it was just submitted to a future, future prospect or next steps. Um, Media Info is widely used in the professional domain, and uh, uh, it's it's a very very nice tool. Cate struct. Uh, is a parser for uh, for files based on the binary binaries. Um, mainly, the, the 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 point there was to uh, create a parser that could easily uh, uh, read from a binary binary file and reduce actually the complexity of um, let's say um, uh, finding the documentation of uh, different file formats and so forth. Interesting project. There is a workshop that. Might be, in, um, might be organized in the coming uh, weeks. So if you want more information about this project, send an, uh, a quick tweet to kate underscore io. AV1 codec, interesting codec from the Open Media Alliance. Uh, yeah, OK. <laughs> Again, as I said, you can put, put it the way you want. This uh, Open Media Alliance. Uh, <laughs> came up, is, it's a consortium of big internet, internet companies, Netflix, Amazon, and so forth are in, and it was a bit of a reaction to uh, the uh, licensing uh, issues around HCVC and H.265 mainly. So it's interesting to see that there's a codec coming up. Now, from the presentation, what came out, com came out was uh, the issue that they have to create a royalty-free codec, basically. So they have several tools. They have almost 50 assessment tools, uh, 50 coding tools, sorry, 
which are being assessed to improve the, the let's say, compression quality of the, of the codec. But the, one of the issues is to find out whether there are underground IPRs uh, or I, um, IPRs on, the, on those tools. What was said was that this uh, 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 codec may be f released, kind of, at least the B-stream might be frozen in Q4 2017, but there were previously a couple of um, uh, dates where it was supposed to be frozen and then uh, postponed again, so therefore there may be there. It, we may have a, a new royalty-free free codec in uh, Q4 2017, but we'll see. One uh, slightly you know, off-the-track uh, quote from the presenter was that this codec, AV1, is uh, currently more performant than H.265, which I would like to see. I mean, if it is said, it's really great, um, and it will be a, a real challenger if it is royalty-free. So, uh, so something to look forward to. Um, FUS, um presented by Max Moros, basically a platform to stress test your uh, APIs and your projects. In a nutshell, they have uh, the OSS FUS, uh, uh, let's say, uh, fuzzing as a service available. So if you want to, uh, let's say, uh, embrace this new technique of uh, stressing your, your application and so forth, you are welcome to uh, join the project and access the 6,000 cores they have available to stress test your project. Um, AES 67 and 70, basically it was a presentation on the standards from uh, uh, our colleague, which is still in the room. Um, it was uh, basically showing for the AES 67 that uh, a concatenation of already existing open standards can be used to improve the interoperability for uh, you know, audio over IP, over IP transmission. Um, there was one key mention here, since we are in the open source environment, that AS67 is already supported by the two framework we showed today, except the uh, connection management. So uh, we look forward to see it you know, uh, uh, supported by, by your frameworks, um, if it is possible. So if, if possible, that would be nice. And that's it, roughly, in terms of a summary. Um, what I can tell you is it's always a pleasure to organize these dev rooms, but we need contributors for presentations. Um, so we will be here next year. Uh, again, the same team. If, uh, uh, if uh, Open Ed and uh, Open Broadcast Systems are, uh, they, you know, they accept, if they fun. accept to be, to be with us. Uh, well, if Post Dev accepts, that would have been nice one. Yeah. If Post Dev accepts, so give us good ratings. Exactly, give us good ratings. We, we try to maintain this track because we saw uh, five years ago that the, it was really missing. And as you can see, uh, we, we tend to have, uh, you know, uh, a nice audience. So please uh, contribute bring new presentations and even ideas for new topics that could, should be addressed. And uh, see you in uh, 2018, maybe, or in September at IBC for those that go to, go to IBC. Thank you very much.